Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. When we last left off, we were in that creepy art gallery. We solved the case. And uh, we needed to find... Oh, right, and I've got this crazy pirate outfit. I forgot about this. Uh, but we needed to find some person of interest. I think, uh, I'm trying to recall... I think he was the painter who refused to sell a painting for some reason. And then it was stolen and or burned. But let's look at the diary because I could be misremembering. But that is my memory of it. So let's see. It's the Amuse from Abroad. Alright, so Mercurio's address. Vogel said that the artist Boniface Mercurio lives somewhere in Old City, but he doesn't know where exactly. He also mentions that Mr. Mercurio is a prominent person. Alright, so that doesn't tell me. The painting that might be stolen. It depicts a roped woman in the act of love with the devil, looking at the viewer with a crowd gathered around them. The devil is red, with numerous tails sprouting from his back. One of a series called Sabbath Night in Cordona. Okay, so yeah, the crazy painting. Here we go, this is the info, I believe. So, last evening, Vogel heard a noise from the undergallery. He descended the stairs, but failed to check thoroughly. The noise was caused by the intruder, who entered the basement through the coal chute. When he heard Vogel coming downstairs, the intruder hid inside the coffin. He waited until Vogel left the caravanserai before vandalizing the art space. Afterwards, he took down the paintings from O. Wilde's room and burned them. But that could just be a cover for the theft. Right, it's not giving me the information. This is a little more detailed here, the undergallery. John and I went down to the basement of Vogel's exhibition, where his more provocative works of art are kept out of the public eye. The rooms there are named in honor of other decadent artists. In A.C. Swinburne's room, we located a coffin with a skeleton inside, which had been slightly moved. On the coffin lid, someone had left a coal handprint. A coal hatch in I.Y. Franco's room was bolted closed. But on the other, or, but on the inner side of its door, we found fresh scratches with a, or with magnet filings. Inside the hatch, someone had left several footprints. A coal footprints trail had been left on the floor in I. Y. Franco's room. The left step is shorter than the right, which indicates lameness. Most of the paintings in O. Wilde's room have been removed from its hangers. A pile of ashes from burned paintings lies on the floor, but one of them frames, or one of the frames appears to be empty. Near them, we found a Mao Pao cigarette butt with a coal fingerprint. That still doesn't tell me. Alright, well, anyways, it was something he said. I don't remember exactly how this prominent person comes into the picture, but yeah. You didn't actually solve the case. You determined that the vandalism is actually a theft. Yeah, yeah. Well, we suspect. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't definitively say he could have just burned them all, but the evidence points to it being a theft. Hey, you've been waiting all week? Well, glad that we could get back into this for you. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. All right, so, yeah, if any of you remembers exactly how this guy came into the picture, that would be uh, a good refresher because it didn't tell us in the evidence. I, From what I recall, he was offered a bunch of money for one of his paintings. He declined it. And then the incident happened, so... Yeah. Boniface Mercurio is the painter of the stolen painting. Okay, so that's what I thought. So anyways... I don't know why that's there, so I'll get rid of it. And... Uh, oh yes, I think I need to actually ask around. Yeah, so I'll pin this. Oh, uh, it's actually got the book thing. Which means I have to look it up. And if I'm gonna look it up, I assume that City Hall would have the information I need, so... We'll go there. My memory was wiped, so I'm not helpful at the moment. <laughs> Your memory was wiped, huh? Did you get a visit from the Men in Black? remember how to run <laughs> I 
Oh, right. I've got John in the, uh, the ice cream, or no, not the ice cream suit, the, um, the gangster suit. Okay. So, our subject is a citizen. The period is now, but I can't do that. Registry. Hmm. Maybe this isn't it. Because I can't pick the period for now. Oh, no, yeah, I can. British 1800s. So maybe this will pick them up. Nope. Hmm. Prominent person. I mean, prominent person could make him an official? It's kind of a stretch, but maybe? Nope. <laughs> Painting of the devil and a woman in love. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Very PG of you. Uh, okay, so... I, I guess we could try the newspaper. He is prominent. He probably showed up in the newspaper at some point. Maybe? I don't know. But it's my best guess. my best guess. Hey, see you, girl. Good to see you. Have you tried the registry? The registry? Where's that? And no, to answer your question, I have not. The, I, I'm not sure what you mean by the registry. Is that a place? Okay, so period would be recent. People. Uh, prominent celebrity? I say prominent and celebrity go together. Uh, and then the district is Old City. Let's see if this picks anything up. Hey, there we go. The Brawl at Artists Sellout. The past week has brought us a new scandal regarding the local so-called Artistic Higher Society. It all began at the painting sellout named by local artists as the Dance of Decadence. The director of a publishing house, the Lion, Darren Turwick, broke the... Idol? Ideal? I don't know what that is. By throwing a chair at a decadent artist, Boniface Mercurio. As Mr. Turwick said later, he did it because Mr. Mercurio brought dishonor to his name. The column writer graciously reminds the reader that recently Mr. Mercurier, or Mr. Mercurio, I can't speak tonight, was spotted with Mrs. Turwick at a coffee shop. Afterwards, an orchestra conductor, Kurt Gallagher, smashed a painting across Mr. Turwick's head to protect his friend, Mercurio. A large brawl started, including a large number of the customers. After a protracted fight, the police arrived. All the high society brawlers were arrested and placed under guard for a week. What a breathtaking event it was. As your loyal personal advisor, I suggest that you obtain a souvenir from the sellout. Unfortunately, has, or unfortunately, it has since ended, but Boniface Mercurio himself invites our readers to visit his home and purchase one of his paintings. You will find him at the address Hermes Avenue between Scarlet Street and Olive Street in Old City. Well, there we go. Okay, that's the whole thing I just read. What is an... I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. What is an idyll? 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 Where was it? That. I-D-Y-L-L. -L. I'm not high society enough to understand what that means. I'm, I'm just a peasant. I don't know these words. All right, so we need to go to Hermes Avenue between Scarlet Street and Olive Street. We're on it. Yeah, 
And it's an old city, so... There's Hermes. There's Olive. And there's Scarlet, so about right there. He looks less like a painter and more like just a street thug. <laughs> He's got the open shirt. That's a dead giveaway. Everyone knows open shirt equals gangster in this game. All right. Where's his home? It's supposed to be around here. Just check the doors, I suppose. That's a pharmacy. Maybe up here. Lots of painting stuff. Well, not painting stuff, but lots of artwork around. This doesn't appear to be it. Hmm, 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 hmm. Oops, sorry. Try random doors. That didn't work. How about oh? I'm kicking kids again. That's what I do. Uh, well, this one. Hey, there we go. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the. I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at? Deary, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write information bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police. Jeez. Okay. Well, it says I can disguise myself. Interesting. Mercurio's flat. At Mercurio's home, the landlady said that only residents were permitted to enter. I guess I'm not as tanned and unkempt as the bohemian artist. All right, so I guess I will dress up as him. You shall not pass. Okay. Can I nail that look? I need the open shirt. Boom. Street brawler. See, I told you. So street brawler. Although I need a white one. But I don't know. Maybe he mixes it up. And uh, let's see. Toggle evidence. There we go. Ah, Well, no hat. And, um, let's see, no glasses. Facial hair, he's got a little bit going on there, but not much. I don't know if I have that look. I might need to go buy that. And then, uh, <laughs> maybe Deluxe Glamour? <laughs> I think that's as close as I can get. No, he's not wearing the eyeshadow or whatever. All right, try this for now. Although I don't think it's right. Mmm, didn't nail it. Did not nail it. Where's the clothing? Trader. You miss near? It's a good game. With fantastic music. She said, no pirates allowed. <laughs> I need a bowl cut or something? Well, let's see what we can buy. Let's pick something that suits you. Yes, what suits me. Oh, there's his shirt. Oh, yeah, that's the one. The Bohemian. If you've got it, flaunt it. I'm going to buy that. Okay, yep, this is the haircut, the messy hair. Leave me alone, mom. Uh, 
And then the facial hair, he's got the artist's bristles. Stubble with an attitude problem. A good choice. Nailed it. A good it. choice indeed. Nailed it. Uh, let's see, it was this way. Check the makeup too? I think I'm good enough. I think we're good. Wait, is this not it? I thought this was the place. Uh, maybe, hold on. Where was I again? Oh, I'm com in completely the wrong place. I'm supposed to be up here. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Well, that was easy. Take advantage of the woman they can't see. Key to Mercurio's flat. Key to flat number two. It's Mercurio's room. Uh, where's the numbers? Am I blind? I don't see any numbers. We'll just assume this is two. Oh boy. Nobody heard a thing, huh? Mercurio's flat. When we arrived at Mercurio's flat, a dead body lay on the floor. Oh, well, it's obviously him. I like how they said it like we don't know who it is. You know, the person I'm currently impersonating. The chest has been searched. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Knife is missing, blue cloth fibers. Can I actually grab that? No. Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. Okay, and they killed him and we're looking for something. But it wasn't the painting. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. It appears the wine was truly awful. Alright, Mercurio's flat. Near the entrance, on the desktop, we found a broken bottle of wine and a shattered frame with blue cloth fibers on it. Open drawers suggested that his desk had been searched. And then there was a new clue in the mine palace. We got the coal footprints, we have the gallery intruder is a smoker who limps. And the painter's flat was searched. The open chest and drawers clearly indicate that someone has thoroughly searched the painter's flat. So if I remember correctly, the initial thinking was that they were after his painting, but clearly not. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. 
<laughs> nice spot there, John. Showing off. A painting covered in blood lay on the floor. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. Bruises on the knuckles, he might have fought back. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. Puddle of blood was there before the rags. Why would they try to clean it up? Damn. Not finding anything else. What am I missing? Hmm. What is it? His leg? No. Oh. I just completely missed the knife somehow. Hello, knife. Could be the murder weapon. A normal kitchen knife. Okay. Mercurio's body. Mercurio's body lay on the floor in his room. Blood from his cut throat covered the floor. I found a kitchen knife and bloodied rags near the body. I spotted bruises on his knuckles. Judging by his post-mortem rigidity, he had lain there for one to two days. Nothing back here. I think that's it. Oh, nope. What's this? Aunt May Whiskey, Brandy Bucks. Quite a collection he had here. Okay. Oh, well, I could talk to John, but. Don't look at me like that, Sherry. I will not touch that dirty floor. All right, what the heck am I missing? There's nothing in here. Oh, yes, there is. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. There we go. The other room contained Mercurio's photographic studio, where we found a ruined photo inside a developer. So, on his bed, looking at the painting, or somebody rummaging through. Well, there was evidence that somebody was rummaging through, so we'll go with that. And maybe, oh yeah, okay, so they were rummaging through it. He found them, he came to hit them with the bottle. In the process, they grabbed the knife. Okay, that makes sense. He got stabbed while trying to use the painting as a weapon? It seems possible. I don't think he killed himself. So I'm gonna go with that, and then this... I don't even know what that is. This guy probably tried to set it up to look like he killed himself. Mm, finish the job there? Yeah. Okay. That all seems... Oh, well, hold on. That wouldn't make any sense because... Why would he be holding the rag? 
The rank doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and then the, um, all of the blood over here maybe doesn't make sense. Like, he only got cut in the neck and nowhere else, so what produced all the blood over here? But the other option... <laughs> hmm. Maybe he did kill himself. I don't know what the blood... The blood part is confusing in this. So what's the other option here? That one doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Okay, but let's go down this line of thinking. So if that were the case... He's looking at his painting. Now, now I'm confused. This doesn't make any sense. Killer didn't intend to kill him if that is the option you take. Oh, I see. Doesn't look like it, to be honest. Maybe the culprit was trying to hide the bleeding, that's why the rags are all there. That's what I thought too, but that this image doesn't seem to indicate that. Like he's not even touching the rag. And honestly, like the attack is the only thing that makes sense, but then the the blood all over that painting doesn't make any sense because he's only got the one wound on his neck that we saw and that was it so just because of that I'm starting to think he killed himself and then like crawled over because it wasn't let me um, actually exit this I think there's blood leading to his spot like he crawled there yeah see there's blood all over there, and then he crawled here, and then bled out of his neck. So yeah, it... Whoever showed up, maybe tried to help? Or just clean it up? I guess he could have got his throat cut over here it's just the the thing didn't seem to look like that oh I guess it's going towards his neck yeah he's holding his neck so if he yeah he would have dropped the painting he would have bled and then crawled over here yeah I think he got attacked I'm thinking he got attacked actually the only thing that makes me doubt that is that the cut looked really clean. And if you're like in the middle of a fight like that, the chance of you landing a clean cut right across the neck against someone that's fighting you seems pretty, uh, pretty low. But let's try this. Let's try this. So if that's the case, that makes more sense. We'll say he was rummaging, he came running, smashed the bottle, and there. Alright, let's try this. It's my best guess. You're not even trying, nope. Sherry. Concentrate. <laughs> CSI shinies on the case. Oh, you don't want me on the case. Okay, so that's not what happened. I still think... I still think... Oh, what's this? Oh, I didn't even see that in here. Alright, so what's the other option if it's not the running in? There was... 
Wait. Wait, what? But that's... How can it be in two places? Uh, I'm confused by this one. What is happening? That is the same person, right? Wait, is the facial hair different? Oh, is there another person? Oh, there's a third person! Oh, I hate it when they... No? Is it? Is that the same facial hair? It looks different, right? Yeah, that's a different person, isn't it? Or maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. It looked like he had a thicker, uh, thicker facial hair back there. Yeah, yeah. It just caught me off guard. Okay, so, but that, what doesn't make sense though is this option. So either way, it shows him in here. Unless there's a memory thing in here. How do I move this? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know what made him pop up. I'm confused by that. Well, yeah, I, I get the rushed out part, but even when you have this one where he's looking at the painting, he's still back over here. So that just seems like a bug. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. The artist would not have killed himself in the middle of developing film. So anyways, he ran out. I feel pretty confident about the whole fight thing. But then this part is confusing. Yeah. That is... Something's not adding up. Oh, we should be good now. This is what we had before. <laughs> this is the exact thing that we had before. And it was not right. So I don't think the knife part is right at all. I don't think he finished the job there. Because he got cut back here, so that that wouldn't make any sense. I don't know, I'm leaning towards the uh, the suicide again. Maybe the thief was after the photo? Well, no, because he didn't take it. He didn't take it. The final- oh, is that a rag? Wait, hold on. I thought he was... No, he's cutting the throat there, isn't he? Or maybe that is a rag. It kind of looks like it. Okay. Man, I hate it when you can't see the details, but I think you guys are right. He is trying to clear it up, but it's not working. Okay. We will validate this, then. Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. Alrighty, so... Mercurio's death events chain. Mercurio was in the middle of developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. The thief attempted to search for something inside the chest, but the artist heard him enter and ran towards him with a wine bottle in his hands. He smashed the bottle across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief, who tried to defend himself by swinging a knife in the air, struck Mercurio's throat. 
When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. But why did Mercurio want to grab the painting in the middle of the fight? Interesting. Maybe there's additional evidence and we've got something new in the Mind Palace. The painter was killed in a fight. An altercation at Mercurio's flat seems to have led to the painter's unintended death. Alright, so... These two are connected. Or not. <laughs> okay. Well, the thief was caught by the painter and... Oh, no, go away. No, unlock. Okay, there we go. Uh, the thief was caught by the painter and the thief... Or the painter was killed in a fight are connected. Indeed. The visitor didn't want to kill Mercurio. Mercurio's murder wasn't the thief's goal. Alright, so do we have something additional in here? No. Oh, the painting itself. Derp. It's time for some chemical magic, John. Chemical magic! Mercurio's painting stained with blood. We found this painting on the floor of Mercurio's flat. It is stained with his blood. We'll do chemical analysis. All right, so we need negative four, four, and one. How shall we do that? Hmm. Well, this seems like a good starting point. Because that gets our four done. And then... Maybe there. That gets me back to zero blue. Oh, I need negative red, though. But we could flip it, but that wouldn't help us here. Okay, I don't think that's gonna help us. All right, let's think about the red first. So maybe we don't actually use that one. Maybe we start with this. That's a better starting point, I think. And of course we could add the two green there to get us to the four. Although, actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. We're going to go back to this. And then also, I want to use this. Yeah, we'll do a minus one on this. do that I wanted to do a plus one let's do a plus one okay so that would get us uh, no that wouldn't help ah, I'm being dumb I always overthink these things okay Start out by adding these two together. I'm too busy th overthinking stuff. Oh wait, I don't wanna. Wait, what happened? Oh, I used the wrong thing. It's like, what happened there? All right, so negative two and four, that's a good start. And then the blues. We could flip this and then minus one or something. Let's flip it. Yeah, and then minus one. That's pretty good. Oh, no, go away. All right, so negative three. So we're almost there. I just need one more red. Or no. I need a positive red. I was thinking a negative. Hmm. Hmm. 
if that's going to work. Yeah. Don't think we can make that work. All right. So we're back to here. What can we do? I guess I could do that. And then flip that. No, that still gets me one red shy. Maybe this, flip it. Help me or the two times? I don't think so. You've solved it? What do you think, Danny? Alright, let me try. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me try this. Let me try using the three. We'll flip that around to a negative three, and then. Uh, what was the one I saw? This. And then the no, no, that wasn't it. What was? Oh, this. This is what I was looking at. And we'll flip that. No, no, we don't need to flip. We need to flip this one. All right, so let's flip this one. We'll add those together. And then, yep, yeah, this will work. We got it. Or no, we don't have it. Crap. That's a negative one, not a positive. Dang it, I thought I had it. Can I salvage this? Can I salvage you? I don't think I can. Why'd you have to be a negative one? Hold on, what are my other options? We could just do... Oh, I can still do it. All right, yeah, yeah, we can do this. So, times that by two. And then, um... I just need... The four. Oh, but this is... Is this my last addition? No, no, I can do one more. Okay. So, that... And that... Can't do that. There we go. We solved it. Perfect. Painting from Mercurio's room. I've managed to erase the blood by using chemicals. It's a still life painting of Mercurio's room. Okay. I don't know how that helps us. But I'll pen it. Uh, that doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. We need to place it on the easel, okay. I don't know how that helps us, but do it. Uh. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John? Oh, he's missing the skull here. Interesting. So they stole the skull? Why would they want that? Alright, uh, it seems that the painting is not a perfect facsimile of the room. Yeah. If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. Alright, and that. room maybe there it is what are you doing back here monster was actually a man poor girl John you ought to be thrilled we are now hunting the devil himself 
Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know, crimes and such like, daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation, and the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse, all right? Stick to the character, tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. Interesting. Interesting and disturbing. All right. There was a stash behind the skull where Mercurio kept a photograph of an African woman being violated by a man dressed as a demon. Sketch of the abuser. At Mercurio's place, we found a photograph of a vile act perpetrated on a young woman by a debauched man. John has sketched the abuser for our reference, depicting him in a red suit with a tail. John's redrawing of a pregnant girl. John has redrawn the photograph of a violation that I found at Mercurio's place. In this painting, he depicts a pregnant woman with tribal scars on her face. Dead man walking. John doesn't like the idea of telling the landlady Landlady, the truth about Mercurio's death. He suggested staying in character. Alright, so I assume... I think a trophy choice is um, incoming. Yeah, I assume I need to go with John for the trophy. Does that sound about right? Well, either way, I should probably... Oh, and I have the new Mind Palace clue. Photograph of... Oh, the... Yeah, photograph of a violation. The photograph depicting the defiling of a pregnant African woman was hidden in a secret stash. But yeah, I am going to save. Okay. Well, I assume I need to go along with John and not tell her, which seems silly, but I want the trophy. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. Uh, yeah, I'll play along, I guess. Who entered my flat recently? Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe, maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Uh, well, nobody told me about the trophy, so I'm going to go with my initial hunch of uh, going along with John. So, call the police to my flat. Well, I, I don't know. Actually, can somebody confirm? Because that's not the choice that I would make. I would tell her that Mercurio is dead. Because it seems silly not to. So, for, what do I have to do for the trophy? Because I think I might have to pick the option that I wouldn't otherwise choose. Call the police? Alright. Man, that's so dumb. I don't like that. But anyways, that's what we shall do. Call the police to my flat. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat. And don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? 
It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Perfect gentleman, I guess. Strange. You're welcome, John. John doesn't like the idea of telling the landlady the truth. He suggested staying in character. I didn't tell her the truth. I lied. Okay. Mercurio's visitor smoked Malpal. According to the landlady's testimony, Mercurio's visitor smoked Malpal cigarettes and had a limp. Seems to fit. Oh, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. All right. Back to my old self. So, we need to ask people about this African woman, which means I probably can't ask them in these clothes, but we'll try. Maybe you know. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I don't want to talk to you, mister. Oh, what if I am wearing different clothes? <laughs> like a pirate suit. <laughs> but no. Uh, let's see. What about Emerald Ottoman outfit, huh? How about this? Could you help me? You are a stranger. I don't talk to strangers. No, fine. Time to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? <laughs> Maybe I just put on some shabby clothes. It's kind of weird that I'd just be asking random people, though. Well, what do I got? What are my other options? <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe Vagabond Rags? What about the Mind Palace? All oh, right. Gallery intruder is a smoker who limps. The gallery thief was in Mercurio's flat. Mercurio's murderer and the gallery thief are the same person. He could have been searching for the photograph. That's probably why he was there. Because the painting wouldn't reveal anything. An artist could paint anything, but if... It was proven that he was the uh, inspiration. That'd be bad. Visitor might have wanted the photo. The visitor's intention might have been to locate the terrible photograph. Visitor might... Oh. The thief wanted the photograph. The thief was at Mercurio's flat to steal the photograph, but found Mercurio instead and killed him in self-defense. Self-defense is uh, a little bit of a stretch, but okay. All right, who could I possibly... I guess I could ask... Uh... No, I doubt he would know. I was going to say I could ask the artist dude, but I doubt he would have any idea. So, do I have anything that would pass as, like, an African wardrobe? Probably not. Let me go to the clothing trader. See if they've got anything. I'm not quite sure how Sherlock's gonna pass off African, but we can give it a shot. I'll just tell people I have that, um, oh, uh, what's it called? What's that uh, disease called where your skin, Let's pick something that like, is just pale white? It doesn't have, like, any pigmentation at all. Navy officer uniform? Why would that be an option? Because normally, like, when something's relevant to the current case, it has that symbol on it. I have no idea why that one's there. But anyways, I'll do the African casual. <laughs> Perfect for warmer climates. I mean, I guess I could be, like, the, just one of the South African whites, but why would they want to talk to me? I don't know. A good choice indeed. 
Vitiligo, yeah, Don't Vitiligo. Let's pick something that suits you. Uh, let me see what else I can get for this disguise, though. Do do do. I guess. Oh wait, what's this? Why is that relevant? Artist tan powder, more expensive than normal dirt. Oh, I guess that was what I was supposed to get for the other one. Oh well, didn't Don't need leave. it. Don't Take one more look. Didn't need it. Are there South African whites? Yes, there are. In fact, uh, that's where my great grandfather came from. May I ask for your assistance? No, I don't know about that. Do you know anything about this? Oh, I've heard talk. Oh, have you now? John's redrawing of a pregnant girl. The scars on the girl's face seem to be from Iwe's ethnic group tribe. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. The only place where you can find Iwe's people in Cordona is the refugee camp, located under Victoria Bridge between Scaladio and Silverton. Interesting. The scars on the girl's face seem to be from Iwe's ethnic group tribe. Okay. I will mark that as my evidence, and it said Scaladio and Silverton. I assume it means over here, because I don't think that bridge has... Well, maybe it does. Maybe that bridge has people underneath. Alright, we'll try it. Wait, what's that marker? Oh, I was going towards the marker. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. All right. So are they down? Beasts. Oh, what's going on? They come to our land, then they murder our people. Drop them all into the sea. Murder? Beasts? Is this familiar to you? I uphold the law, so I'm not answering your questions. Okay. Just gonna walk in. Hi. Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. Uh, I will tell him that I'm from City Hall, which is kind of true. I know uh, my brother, he does City Hall-ish things. I'm from City Hall. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm from City Hall. They sent me to oversee the situation. No, you're not. I'm the supervisor of the camp. And I'm the one who's handling the current situation on behalf of City Hall. Ronald Harlow at your service. Now, sir, tell me who you really are, or you'll have to explain yourself to the police. I have full authority to request they detain you. Very well, Mr. Harlow. I am a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness on my case. Sherlock Holmes is my real name. Though. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorized. I can't let you in, so please, step back. Observe. Slight mustache. Tries to appear older. Overdressed. Wants to look authoritative. Damp palms. Sweating. Stressed. He's just a baby. Pale bags under eyes. Works indoors. Poor lighting. <laughs> what else you got on you? Uh, not seeing anything. His shoes. Clean shoes. Sedentary. 
Ronald Harlow is a pale young clerk who tries his best to oversee a refugee camp assigned to him by City Hall. He is not very happy with such a responsibility, but he always does things by the book and executes all tasks he is given. However, he lacks the experience to deal with problems outside his writing desk. He is attempting to look older than his years by growing a scant mustache. Pale skin and bags under his eyes suggest he works at a poorly lit office, which he rarely leaves, judging by his clean and barely worn shoes. He craves to look authoritative by wearing smart clothes, but his look is out of place considering Cordona's weather. Sweaty palms suggest that Ronald is extremely stressed by being outside his comfort zone. The Dazed Formalist Or the Tired Pen Pusher Ronald Harlow is a depressed young clerk, exhausted by his day-to-day -day job. City Hall has assigned him to oversee the refugee camp, but he is too tired and indifferent to solve the problems that arise. He has a scant mustache, which... is this all the same? No. He has a scant mustache, which he thinks makes him look older. Pale skin and bags under his eyes suggest he is tired of his dark, cramped office which he rarely leaves. Yet judging by his clean and barely worn shoes, he does not favor the outdoors in any case. Sweaty palms suggest that Ronald is stressed. He might have worn fewer clothes considering today's weather. I'm thinking it's Dazed Formalist. I'm thinking Dazed Formalist. What do you guys want to go with? I don't think he's a tired pin pusher. He didn't seem disinterested to me. Alright, I'm gonna go with the Formalist. Sorry, Miss Chen. Oh, and sorry. I actually don't know how to pronounce your name now that I look at it. Is it Miskill? I could just call you Ross, if you don't mind. You think it's both? <laughs> wow, we seem to be split. Actually, I think more of you want a pin pusher. And now Teddy ties it again. Alright, I'm gonna break the tie. I'm going with Formalist. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you. I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm with City Hall, and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest, but in return, I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child, or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her, and I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. How did the refugees get here? Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh. So you're not from around here yourself? I've been away. For some time. But I read the papers. Yes. This whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. Your work with the camp. 
Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. I'm ready to go in. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Chooksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. All right. We've gained access. So, there's the description of Ronald Harlow. I, I think we nailed it. And refugee camp crime scene. A crowd has gathered at the entrance of the refugee camp. The police are trying to calm people down. Ronald Harlow, an official from City Hall who oversees the camp, says a dead body was found inside the camp, and the police suspect the refugees of murder. I have promised to find out what happened. In exchange, Harlow will help me find the abused refugee woman from the photograph. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Hello there. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Hmm. Any other victims? And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Who are the suspects? Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Who is the dead man? Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them, too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. This guy was surprisingly helpful for someone who didn't want to let me in. 
All right, camp intruder's body. A man's body was found in the camp, according to Inspector Tewksbury's version. Based on what witness witnesses say they saw from a bridge, the man was killed by a refugee mob and thrown into a sewage canal. The inspector allowed me to look at the body and its possessions and come up with my own version of what happened. Refugee camp scene. The intruder's body was lying in the sewage canal before the police dragged it out. The man had been stabbed in the chest. All right, we will keep this as my active evidence, I suppose. There's the body. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. What a pleasant man this Mr. Chooksbury is. Oh, I thought that was evidence, just some fireflies. Clearly a left handprint here. A bloody handprint on a stone near the bridge suggest or suggests that the man tried to grab hold of it while falling into the canal. Guess I'm going out of order this time. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. Someone bled profusely here. I know, I've committed blasphemy by going out of order. It's unlike me. I'm mixing it up. Alright, a trail of blood drops on the ground. A trail of blood. Okay. A trail of blood drops on the ground leads to a wooden bridge over the sewage canal. By the bridge, there are foot tracks caused by friction. Some crates in the middle of the camp have been toppled and are lying on ground or on the ground. One is cracked as if it had been struck. These events have fractured into so many pieces, but I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A heavy boot with a worn out sole. A man's footprint. A series of footprints of different sizes covers the campground. One of the footprints indicates a worn out sole. Carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. That doesn't seem like much evidence. Near the refugee shacks, there are scattered Carnelian agate beads, possibly fallen from a torn bracelet. Okay, I guess if it was ripped. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. Limping? I was thinking the same thing, Danny. No hint of blood or impact. It's possible he went to go retrieve the evidence, and then when he didn't find it, he went to destroy the evidence, so to speak. That's my current line of thinking. I'll have to see who it is, though. Someone was dragged against their will. A 
A straight blood splash on the ground looks as if it was sprayed down from a blade. A stick beside it may be an improvised blunt weapon. From the shacks on the far side of the camp, there are evident tracks on the ground. There are evident tracks? As if someone had been dragged forcefully. The refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. Ooh, someone used my new command. The time has come. Alright, yeah, this guy had a bad time. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. <laughs> so we're just gonna look at him. Hope you know how to use a bandage. He is in shock, feverish, and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. Yeah, I gotta help him. First, let me look at this. Wounded refugee. There is a wounded refugee in the camp. He looks in a bad way. The cut on his chest is deep and bleeding. He is feverish and dehydrated. The man will certainly die of infection if his wound is not treated. Let's see what I can find in the camp. I must concentrate on finding something to clean the wound, something to disinfect it, and something to use as a bandage. All right, so that's the top priority. We're gonna help this guy out. That will kill, not save him. <laughs> oh, not that then. What if that's an option? Put him out of his suffering. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. You might want to save before trying to save him? Okay. Good call. Good call. Alright, what else? I'll use it to create a solution. Not seeing anything else. Hold on. So, we need something to clean the wound, we got that. Something to disinfect it, and something to use as a bandage. Disinfect. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. Oh, I didn't actually take the stuff, huh? Or did I? Yeah, I didn't actually take it. Oops. Alright, we got it. I've collected all the ingredients. Now to prepare the first aid solution. All right, there we go. Gotta actually pick the stuff up. Cloth that I found will do for bandages. The water I obtained from the cauldron is clean enough. Aloe vera is a good natural remedy against infection. I have collected everything I need. It remains only to grind the leaves. Gotta bring out my mortar and pestle. I take it everywhere. Okay. Let's see if we can do this one uh, a little bit quicker than the last one. So, I think a good starting point is right here, and maybe we double it. Oh wait, that's crap. All oh, right, and then uh, flip it. I had the right, oh, yeah. Okay, so that's flipped. I think that's a good starting point. Uh, and then maybe, Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We got that. And this. So let's bring whoop, bring that over here. Boom. Hey. Oh, right, 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 right. I got to add those together. Okay. Add those together. Boom. And we can add 
these together and then oh i need one more red though or actually no no we got it we got it i'm gonna plus one this uh do, do, do. where's the plus there we go we're gonna plus one this oh wait i didn't need to plus one what am i talking about yeah yeah we're good just add these together and then put that down here just need this we'll flip it we'll minus one on it and then we'll plus these together there we go A guy always bringing a mortal, mortal. <laughs> I, you made me say it wrong. <laughs> a mortal and pestle, a mortar and pestle, is uh, kind of scary. All right, I've made a solution to clean out the wound and stop the bleeding. Let us help this poor man. We got you, buddy. And he can give me information, so it's also useful. Uh, thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. Hey, you said I could f fail. Well, I was lied to. Can I actually talk to him now? Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. Well, he's not going to tell me anything. Come on, dude. I just helped you out. Help me out. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Malpal. Soaked with salt water. 1,000 pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. Alright, so that's what he had on his body. Among the dead man's possessions are 1,000 British pounds, a cigarette case which still has several Malpal cigarettes in it, a butt of the same brand was found at Vogel's Gallery, and a sheath for a short blade, such as a knife or a dirk. Looking for additional things. Don't see them. It was possible to take dirty clothing, dirty water, etc. Oh. But did we miss a trophy? Well, I don't know. If we missed a trophy, let me know. We'll, we'll make sure to get it. Hmm. Coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. Interesting. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? It does. Did you forget? A steel dirk. Sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. And <laughs> I just took it. Okay. Hope they don't mind. I'd say the blade penetrated upward. However, the wound is too messy to be certain. Heavy boots. With one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. Violent death. This man, limping. Coal dust. I think we're on to something here, John. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? Alright, it seems like all the signs are pointing in the same direction. Camp intruder's tattoo. The man found dead inside the refugee camp has a distinctive tattoo on his neck. Two lines, one over another, with a point at the top. Camp Intruder's body. Let's see what else. Alright, upon examining the body, I found the man was stabbed by a Navy Dirk. 
The blade penetrated upward, however, the stab wound in the chest is lacerated as if the dirk was removed or, or was moved around while still in the chest cavity. The shoe sole on the left foot is more worn than the right. The man must have been limping. There is coal dust under his fingernails. A distinctive tattoo on his neck. Two horizontal lines, one over another with a point at the top. How did the intruder get into the camp? We need to find out how the intruder broke into the camp. What are the options? Oh, and the Mayan Palace. Coal footprints and coal dust under the man's nails. There was a coal residue under the fingernails of the dead man in the refugee camp. The thug also visited Vogel's gallery. The dead man from the refugee camp was the same person who had broken into Vogel's gallery. Such a mess. Let's figure it out. If they find out about the passage, everything will go to hell. Oh, really? Oh, right. Find out what the passage is for. Money? Doubt it. Hysteria? Doubt it. Old sleuth? Nope. Take refugees out? No. Jack's in office? Low salary. Camp lockdown. Public eye. Alright, I still suck at this. Excuse me, gentlemen. Could you redo your conversation? Thank you. Okay, take refugees out, maybe. Yep. Jackson office, I don't even know what that means. Old sleuth, no. Money, probably not. Hysteria, no. Our hysteria actually might have been low salary. Camp lockdown. Public eye. Oh, not public eye. Okay. Maybe money? Maybe hysteria? If people knew, if they, find they might have snuck the them in here to avoid hysteria. Maybe. Hysteria. Nope. Camp lockdown. Public eye was no money. Hey, it is money. What's going on at the refugee camp? Police officers are worried that the situation with the dead body will put the camp into strict lockdown, and they will lose the money flow they will they were earning from their scheme. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here. Sherry. Perhaps we should sniff around in the camp a little more thoroughly. Uh, let's see. Police officers are worried that the situation with the dead body will put the camp into strict lockdown and they will lose the money flow they were earning from their scheme. John suggests we could learn more about this matter by asking around the camp, but we should do this before we leave the camp for good. The place might be put into lockdown again. Alright, well... We tend to like to do John's challenges, so maybe we talk to this guy. Could you help me? Don't think I can help you, lads. Maybe the guy we healed? How about you? No? Still not talking? Could you help me? Don't think I can help you, lad. Yeah, I don't think the police are gonna working. help me. You might need a different tag. Maybe there's. Well, they are in lockdown. Maybe I'll get a chance to question him. He's supposed to help me. Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a genius bureaucrat came up with this idea? We have seen some dark places in Cordona, but this. I think the trophy was for completing all of John's challenges slash requests. Change my clothes? I mean, I don't think, I, I don't know if I can, but I doubt they're just gonna suddenly be like, oh yes, he's a policeman like us. But maybe, maybe they're stupid. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. Yeah, he doesn't know. I guess we could go a little bit more. We can lean in a little bit more. They might get mad that I uh, <laughs> am dressing up as them, though. Do you know anything about this? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the yeah, others. I think we're going to have to ask this the refugees. Working. You might need a different tack. 
Alright, well, let me go back to my clothes then. So I don't look suspicious. I don't think it actually matters, but... I'm role-playing here, okay? It's important. Although I guess I was an African guard before. But now! Now I'm, uh, appropriate. Uh, so now what? Now what? Still looking for ways that the intruder could have got in. He could have come in by boat. Unlikely. It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. Oh, I thought the boat was actually there. By boat, there is a narrow canal that runs past the camp. The intruder could have come by boat, but there's no boat near the camp and the police guards would have seen him. So, that one's unlikely. And... I guess he could have, like, rappelled down or something. Oh, there's a ladder over here. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. Oh, right, I could ask this dude. That's a good call. Alright, hold on. Uh, climb the wall using a ladder or rope. The wall is sheer and too high for a ladder. If he expected to climb back up carrying something, using a rope would have proved difficult. Or would prove difficult. You still here? Provide evidence. Uh, let's see. Well, the body. Don't bother someone else with this, son. Or not. All right, what else could we ask him about? <laughs> None of this stuff really works. All right, well, we were going to ask him about this. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. Alright, he does not care. Well, that didn't get us very far. Inspector Tewksbury says he has heard nothing about any shady dealings in the camp, but he doesn't seem surprised about his colleagues being involved in such an operation. Well, now what you want me to do, John? I'm plumb out of ideas. <laughs> Man, that dude sucks. <laughs> Alright, well... We won't worry about that at the moment. We're still looking for ways that the intruder could have got in, so we didn't check the main doorway. That seems like an option. Oh, that's not real. Oh, we could ask that dude. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, hello? Uh, what am I missing here? There's clearly something. Uh, okay, well, anyways. Um, let me ask him about this first. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. Ask the guys talking? That's a bit confrontational, but we can try that. Hey, I eavesdropped on you and you're doing shady stuff. You should tell me all about it. May I ask for your assistance? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Yeah, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's the way. But what the, where is this supposed other entrance? There was clearly a memory there. The sewer. Well, that's... That's the... Oh. Right. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. 
charm. Through the sewers, there is a sewer exit on the camp territory, but it's permanently sealed and cannot be opened without much labor and noise. Alright, so that's not it. What? Oh, I thought there was a clue there. I'm like, what is that? I don't think we would talk to the people that we eavesdropped on. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're not just going to tell me what they've been up to. Tell the city hall guy about the shady deal? I tried to talk to him, and uh, he said nothing. I am not... I, I still think it's the entrance, but I didn't see anything, which is weird. Other than the flashback, but there seems to be nothing there. See anything? Yeah, it's weird that they've got an officer and somebody else smoking here. In fact, it might even be the guy that got murdered, but there's no clue. Which is strange. Ask the guy I saved, I tried to talk to him, he wouldn't. Alright, I'm baffled. There is something to find at the entrance, but I think you might need to exhaust all other options first. I see. Okay, well... I guess we need to f figure this out. Well, I got no better ideas, so... I suppose we could dress up as a officer again and try to trick him, but... Incredibly unlikely that this works. In my opinion. I think there's something else for us to do. And I'm surprised they don't get mad that I'm impersonating a cop. Do you know anything about this? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. Yeah. That is not it. I didn't leave behind any evidence, did I? Let me get back in my regular clothes. Talk to all of the cops? I I don't think the cops are it. Like when when you're going down the wrong path, you uh you know, it's, it doesn't leave, like, room for just try more times. Like, if you talk to a cop and it doesn't work, then I've never had a situation in the game where it's like, oh, okay, now it'll work. Keep the clue with the thumbtack pinned. Well, I did. I had this on when I was looking around. That's not actually what we're trying to work on right now, because I couldn't find another entry. Even though I'm still convinced it's the entrance. Yeah, I, I don't know. Then investigate the entrance. Well, I have been. This is the entrance. Talk to the cop here? I tried that. But we can try again. I'll talk to this guy. Who isn't allowed to visit the crime scene these days? Yeah, see, these guys don't care. I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. Alright, I'm stuck. I don't... No. Is there something over here? No. Talk to Barlow? I already tried that. You guys got your eyes closed? <laughs> we tried this. 
Is there more camp or people to talk to about the cop next to the cop with the wounded guy? L like I said, I've never had a case where you talk to like one type of person and that doesn't work. So then you try talking to more. Try looking at the cigarettes by the entrance with the thumbtack clue pinned. I did that already. I thought. But we can try again. Yeah, there's nothing here. Oh, it's a freaking interact. Oh, dumb. Thank you. I was, yeah, it's got the eyeball thing. So I was in the frame of mind that I need to find it with the concentration. I hate that. A single malpal butt. Roadman Cigarettes, a brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. All right, so question for those that know. Do we have to finish this now? I don't think we can, but if there is somehow, please uh, let us know. All right, what is this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Front entrance, it's guarded heavily by the police, but would they simply let them in? There are a lot of cigarette butts at the smoking spot near the main entrance. Most of them are of the Roadman's brand, which is popular among Cordona police. But there is also one Malpal butt. Coinc or coincidentally or not, a Malpal cigarette butt was also found at Werner Vogel's gallery after the break-in. Indeed, it's the simplest things. Alright, well, while I wait for an answer on the other thing, we'll just save. And if I need to go back, I will, because I don't think that we can progress that particular thing just yet. I think we need to talk to some refugees. So, I have saved. We can go back if we need. And we supposedly have enough information for this. All right, Gangster John, what happened? Do the reconstruction first, you can complete John's challenge later. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. She got dragged by our buddy, Mr. Limping Man. This guy helped, and in return, he got stabbed. Although, yeah, he's holding the wep the uh, the branch. That works out perfectly. But let's see the other option. Just to amuse us. Wait. What's the difference here? Uh. Very subtle difference. Uh. Okay. I don't know why it would matter if she's still being dragged or if what's the other option or if she's just standing there oh like they're working together no no he was dragging her he was definitely dragging her defending her again highly doubt it pushed her down that's where the beads broke or no not pushed her down but she um ringed herself free and then they're coming he tries to make a run for it but gets probably tossed into the boxes i imagine or no maybe it was just running yeah, he's probably just running and tripped. Uh, at that point, he had no knife. Yeah, I'm thinking that's more likely. Kicked into the water? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He was already bleeding at this point. Now, okay, maybe he did... 
Well, he was bleeding, but I think it said it wasn't a lot of blood, if I remember correctly. I think it was just a little bit of blood, so maybe in the crash, he just hurt himself a little bit, because there's not much blood here. So if he had been stabbed at that point, I don't... I think he would have been bleeding a lot more. But then he just ends up in the water, so he must have got stabbed in here at some point. He fell on his own. Oh, I see it. Yeah, okay. And yeah, the knife's already in his chest there. Good call. Good call. I didn't see that. Yeah. And it said it had been wiggled around, which would make sense. Because he crashed and, you know, it kind of got like jabbed around his chest as he smashed into the ground. See, I like this. I think we've, I think we nailed it. <laughs> this is Sparta! <laughs> yeah, I think we nailed it. Alright, I am going to reconstruct this. I think this is correct. You're not even trying, or not. Sherry. Concentrate. Or not. Alright, maybe this is different? No, because he drops the knife there. That's not it. I'm I'm still confident about him crashing. So maybe it's one of these earlier ones. That she falls. What's the other option? No, that's not it. He was not kicked, he fell in. Oh yeah, right. I totally forgot about the handprint. You are correct. Yeah, yeah, he fell in. Yep, thank you. Totally forgot about the handprint. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick. Yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. All right, nice job, nice job. All right, so we still need to get this done. Or no, not this one. Uh, this one. Anyways, failed kidnapping. The thug freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police let him in after they had a short smoke, smoke talk together. His aim was to take a refugee woman out of the camp. She resisted, so he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, but received a cut to his chest. More refugees came to protect the woman, which the thug hadn't expected. He took fright and decided to flee. However, he stumbled over crates scattered on the ground and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. The wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to get back on his feet, still hoping to flee, but still bleeding. He lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Alright, so let's go tell this guy what happened. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. 
There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger, but somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. Fan. One small clock can make any difference in this place. Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. All right, awesome. We've gotten the refugees released. What's going on at the refugee camp? Working on that and John's redrawing of a pregnant woman. The refugees in the camp are no longer detained by the police. Now I can find the girl. Good, let's do this first though. All right, what do you know? Actually, we should talk to the guy that we saved. Or is he still jacked up? Hi, buddy. Um, he's still jacked up. If he's sitting up, he should be able to talk to us. Excuse me, just one question. They often take us from the camps to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. What's going on at the refugee camp? According to the refugees, some shady people regularly visit the camp and take refugees away with them to perform various work. The work is usually hard, but the refugees receive money and food. The girl was abused after she was supposedly taken to such work. Since then, the refugees decided not to allow their women to be taken. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. Alright, it's all coming together. According to the refugees, some shady people... Yeah, we already saw that. It looks as if there's a smuggling ring run by the police guards in the camp and some shady influencers from outside. Taking refugees from the camp was the usual business up until today when the refugees stood up against the thug. Perhaps we'll hear more about it if we proceed with the case. Alright, so we gotta find... The woman and the mind palace is something new. Photograph of a violation. The thug tried to drag the girl away. The thug didn't hurt the girl. Yeah, that's not what happened. The thug tried to forcibly drag the refugee woman away. Yep, okay. Is this her? Mm, maybe? It's got the scars? Or tattoos or whatever those are? I don't know if that's her. It's pretty close though, so I'm gonna see. Is this familiar to you? Sorry. We don't see much here. Yeah, not her. Maybe this lady? Hello? Uh, can't talk to her. What's up with you, buddy? Well, it says I can talk to her. I can't get to her. Hello? Excuse me! Fine. Maybe elsewhere. If it's tribal, they will all have scars. That's a good point. Maybe she's back here. Nope, that's John. Alright, I'm pretty sure that's her on the rock. I can't get to her. Although she was dragged out of the chicken coop area, so maybe this guy knows. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Nayla, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. 
Hello, Nayla. <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John, by a long shot. Naylor doesn't want his meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Interesting. All right, this man did not come here by chance. He is a very important thread in this case, and this tattoo might help me pull it out. And then the mind palace. The defiler had a peculiar cross. Nayla drew the cross-shaped badge she saw on her defiler's chest. And Nayla is the woman from the photograph. I found the woman from the photograph. She is a young African refugee named Nayla. That's right, so a photograph of a violation in Nayla. Not connected. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I guess... I guess we could link these two. There we go. The Defiler is a high-ranking official. Badges such as these are usually awarded to high-ranking officials. The Defiler from the photograph might be one. Oh, and the casebook just lit up. So I didn't actually see the cross. Am I missing something? Okay, anyway, sketch of the abuser. At Mercurio's play, yeah, yeah, we already saw that. Nayla drew a peculiar cross-shaped badge she saw on the, the botcher's chest. Sorry, so she drew it there. Uh, badges like this are usually awarded to British high-ranking officials. Not many of those visit Cordona, let alone work on the island. Okay, so it seems to think we can go to an archive for that, but I'm curious about the tattoo. Who can we speak to about this? Maybe our investigator friends over here. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. All right, I guess not. Oh, uh, maybe we could ask, uh, what's his face? This guy. At least some of your kind have a hat. Thank you again. More in the mind palace? Hmm. Uh, all right, well, these two could be connected. Nope. No, there's not. There is not more in here. Alright, well, I guess we're off to the archive. I could ask... Uh, well, I could just ask... Uh, no, I don't know who I can ask about this tattoo. A man found dead inside the refugee camp has a distinctive tattoo on his neck. Two lines, one over... Another with a point at the top. This man did not come here by chance. He's a very important thread in this case. And this tattoo might help me to pull it. Alright, we're going to try the archive. We'll see what that does. And we will go to... Uh... Where can we go for this? I guess City Hall? Let's try City Hall. Oh, and I can't fast travel. If he's an official, maybe ask City Hall or Archive. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Trophy alert in this case. Whenever you get the chance to punch someone in the face, do it. It's fun and there's a trophy for it. I like punching people. All right.
I feel like, um... I feel like the, uh, the impact of the punch will be lessened now, though. An unexpected punch is much more exciting. Alright, well, let me ask, uh, this lady. Maybe she knows. Have you found anything helpful? Apparently not. Alright, well, that was... That was no help. But the archive, perhaps. All right, subjects, we are looking for an official. Period is now. Registry, I guess occupation. We need to know what he does. Although we could do district two apparently. Or no, actually we can't do a district. Not necessarily. All right, let's try this. Boom, Thomas Norton profile. Thomas Norton, born 1840 in London, graduated from the University of Oxford in 1864. In 1869, started working at the Home Office as a secretary. In 1875, took a position as a military commissioner in India. Honored by the Queen herself with the Order of the Bath in 1877. And 1 March 1878, was appointed as the British envoy in Cordona with his own cabinet in the City Hall. Oh, really? Oh, really, Thomas Norton? That's quite the development. Alright, so we still have the tattoo and the profile. Let's ask about the tattoo first. Let's ask a random person. Is somebody in here? How about you? Maybe you know. Oh, can't talk to you. Okay. Help me, please. I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. Save your game. Okay. Alright, well, I still don't know where I'm going to get information on that tattoo, but... We can at least ask her about him. Have you found anything helpful? No? Alright, where's his office? We've got the chief archivist. We have Thomas Norton. Hello, Thomas. You horrible man, you. Just let me talk to him from here. Or not. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Facial hair, no time to shave. Red eyes, didn't sleep last night. Order of the bath, well worn, never removed. Red stain, wine? <laughs> it's quite the stain, you didn't clean that up? Rumpled clothes, stays at work late? A red wine stain on the wrist and his unshaven face indicate a lazy attitude towards his duty. The order of the bath looks quite worn. The man is proud of it and never takes it off. Wrinkled clothes and red eyes may mean that he didn't return home last night. Instead of work, this man would rather lose himself in depravity and alcohol. Envoy is a partygoer. Envoy is in remorse. The order of the bath looks quite worn. The man is proud of it and never takes it off. The red stain on his wrist indicates that he has recently drank wine. His clothes are wrinkled, he barely bothers to shave, and his red eyes indicate that he may suffer from insomnia or deep anxiety. It looks as if he lives within a nightmare, attempting to rid himself of his terrible memories of past mistakes. Alright, so I'm trying to reconstruct everything. Because I, I feel like I... I feel like I've lost the strain of how he's involved, so... Let me try to remember. He was the one... He was the one in the portrait. Yeah, he was the one in the portrait doing the terrible thing to the lady. And then the other guy was just someone that he hired? 
I'm trying to figure out how the other guy comes into play. This was the guy in the devil costume. So, like, I guess they hired the other guy? I'm trying to remember where the other guy came from. Like, what his deal was. Party goer for trophy? I mean, it makes sense based on the photo. Matt! Thank you very much! Hey, guy, and I, or hey guys, I know I've not been here for a while. Sorry about that. I've been busy. How is everyone tonight? I'm doing well. I can't speak for everybody else. But good to see you, Matt. Keep investigating. It will make sense in the end. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure, like, you know, I, I, I don't play this game, like, sequentially, day to day. So I was just making sure I've, I've got it right in my head. But, yeah, I think that's where we're at. I think I've properly recalled all of the information. So, anyways, Envoy is a party goer. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? <laughs> Do I have to punch him right away? Because I want to ask the other questions. Do you know? Or can I punch him and then ask him questions? Does anybody know? <laughs> punch him. <laughs> Matt just shows up, punch him. <laughs> Matt doesn't even care. Like, this guy could be, like, helping orphans in his spare time on the weekends. And if there's an option to punch him, Matt's, Matt's going to punch him. Trophy name, punch first, talk later. Okay. <laughs> punch him in the face. You defiled a girl who was with child. Don't even pretend that you regret what took place. Do you wonder why I came here? It is because I am disgusted with people like you, and the only way in my mind to rid the world of your ilk is to see you hanging from the gallows. All right, all right. Is it about money, as you said in the letter? I have it, all right? There's no need for violence. I've never written a single word to you. As you can see, I have a more direct approach. That letter, it wasn't from you. So what do you want? Answers, to start with. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr... Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? <laughs> That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? Holy crap, thank you, E.G. Elimination, you are far too kind, my friend. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see... Well, I'm most curious about who's blackmailing him. Who's blackmailing you? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. What happened at the party? So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say. Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's... Rather rare, 
So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. Did you know Mercurio? Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people. I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. You tried to steal the painting? The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Mr. Holmes. I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake, but I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. <laughs> Why'd the music just cut off so suddenly? <laughs> uh, help the refugees or specifically... Help Nayla. Uh, I don't think he specifically did anything to the refugees. I think he specifically did something to Nayla because I don't think he's involved in all the smuggling stuff. From what I understand. At least from what he's saying. What do you guys want? I think help Nayla. But he could help the... Well, actually, he could help the whole refugees. He's got the power. Yeah, I mean, you may as well help all of them, huh? I wouldn't want help from him. He can piss off. Well, we got to pick one. Oh, help the refugees is a trophy choice. Well, there we go. The decision was made for us, and that's where I was leaning towards anyway. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees. Find them decent homes. Give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes. All right. I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Oh, well, there you go. Help Nayla. <laughs> Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. All right, so we've got the portrait, character portrait of uh, Mr. Thomas Norton and the envoy testimony. The envoy said he was at the party, but was drugged, so he barely remembers the event. He received a letter from an anonymous person who blackmailed the envoy extorting money in exchange for the photograph. The envoy also claims that he did not hire the thief, nor is he responsible for Mercurio's death. But he tried to buy the painting because he was afraid of losing his social position. He claims himself guilty, but proposes a deal. If I help, or if I bring, eh. He claims himself guilty, but proposes a deal. If I bring him the photograph, he will help the refugees. All right, so, but we still don't know anything about the tattoo. And honestly, I don't think it was him. It doesn't make sense for him, for it to be him. Like he was just gonna buy the painting well, I guess it still makes sense. He was gonna buy the painting, and it was refused. Okay, never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. It could still very well be him. I am gonna ask him about this tattoo, then maybe he knows. Have you decided yet? Apparently, I have not. All right, did that give me? Oh, it gave me new mind palace stuff. Maybe this goes somewhere. 
All right, so the thug tried to drag the girl away. The thug didn't hurt the girl. Nayla is the woman from the... F oh, why is this even here? This should go away. That clearly is not right. All right, Nayla is the woman from the photograph. The envoy's offer. The photo will ruin the envoy's career. All right, well, maybe these two. Okay. System sufferers. All refugees are victims of the system. The situation they are in must and can be mended. Okay. And then these are connected. Or not. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Try to connect the two thug ones? These? I guess he didn't hurt her. I guess I didn't read the details. All right, so the thug tried to drag the girl away. The thug tried to forcibly drag the refugee woman away. The thug was armed and defended himself against the refugees, but he did not harm the woman. You're right. You are right. I should have connected those. The thug wanted to kidnap the girl. The thug came to the camp intending to kidnap a woman. He had the opportunity to kill her, but that wasn't his goal. So, yeah. If he wanted to get rid of her, like, if he had hired that man, he would have just killed her and be done with it. So, he was clearly trying to take her as blackmail against him, in my opinion. A henchman, not merely a thief. He is not merely a thief, but also a kidnapper. A henchman who takes on various roles. Okay. Well, what about these other ones? The photo will ruin the career. I already tried to... Well, I can combine these two. The envoy wants to hide the proof. The envoy's interest in the photograph is pragmatic. If he obtains it, nothing will threaten his, his reputation. The envoy wants to secure his reputation. The British envoy violated Nayla, the refugee, during the party. Were the photograph of the crime to be released, it would ruin his career. Or perhaps I could use that leverage to help the refugee camp. Merciless justice. The envoy can be neither trusted nor forgiven for what he did. Humiliation and ostr ostracization. Oh, my God, I hate that word. Ostracization from an outraged Cordona are the least he deserves. Give the photograph to Vogel so he can make everything public. Or smaller evil for the greater good. Thomas Norton is a debaucher who has committed a terrible act. Even though he deserves to be brought to justice, I cannot overlook the opportunity to do greater good. Give the envoy the photograph in exchange for the refugee's legalization. But we're not going to make that choice because that would be an accusation. And I still don't know what that tattoo is all about. So we want to see all of the options first. And honestly, I'm kind of leaning away from him. I, I really just don't think that it's him. Anyways, envoy testimony. Why is this a question? Or not a question, but a, a dialogue thingy. All right. I don't know if I read this one. The envoy said he was at the party but was drugged, so he barely remembers the event. He received a letter from an anonymous person who blackmailed the envoy extorting money in exchange for the photograph. The envoy also claims that he did not hire the thief, nor is he responsible for Mercurio's death, but he tried to buy the painting because he was afraid of losing his social position. He claims himself guilty, but, propo but proposes a deal. If I bring him the photograph, he will help the refugees. Wait, what happened? What did I miss? I missed something in chat. Alright, I don't even know where to go with this. I feel like I've hit a dead end. I, I need to know about a tattoo. And then I just have this testimony. I could go back to Vogel. Let me go back to Vogel. That's my best idea. Oh, I missed the spammer. If Vogel's got nothing for me, then I'm confused. 
I think the dialogue icon on Envoy's testimony is just indicating that you have the option to accuse him. Ah. Yeah, I don't... I don't know anything about this tattoo. I mean, I guess I could ask random criminals. <laughs> but... I, I don't know. I feel like I don't have much to, to work with at the moment. I gotta figure out this tattoo thing. Police archives? Ah, that's interesting. Well, I came all this way. I should at least talk to Vogel, see what he's up to. If I can actually go back in. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? <laughs> okay. Wait, give him the photo? Well, he better give it back. Give him the photo. I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. The thief is dead. Mercurio is dead. Well, he'll be more interested in Mercurio, so Mercurio is dead. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. The thief is dead. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. For I presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? Uh... I found a photo? What do you mean I didn't find the painting? I thought the painting was the... Uh, didn't we see the painting? All right, anyways, uh, I found a photo. I found the source of Mercurio's artistic inspiration. A photograph. What troubled me was that the sexual act captured was non-consensual. She was violated? Dear God, how despicable. Her abuser was in fact the British envoy. Mercurio took a picture of him committing the atrocity and then used it as artistic inspiration. I had no idea a mere break-in would eventually expose such barbarity. I didn't find the painting, although I thought I did. Unfortunately, I could not locate the missing painting. Oh, Mr. Holmes, such disappointing news. Not even a shred of information? The slightest lead? I'm afraid the case has gone cold. Uh, I suppose if you were unable to find it, no one else could. What a pity. Oh, but I can tell. You learned something else, didn't you? Mr. Vogel, I want you to make everything public, including the photograph. I'm sure you have a connection at the Cordona Chronicle. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, loyal to your own truth till the end. Yes, I'm acquainted with the staff of the Chronicle. The story is sensational and will surely draw attention to the gallery. But you must be aware that exposing the scandal will further hurt the victim. Does that not bother you? No matter what one does, the truth tends to come out, as well it should. I won't be the one to stand in its way. Though it's only your subjective truth being exposed. Not that I'm judging. It's perfectly reasonable for everyone to have their own views. When you called me, you knew exactly what you would get. Oh, but I'm not like you, Mr. Holmes. I cannot be sure of anything. Regardless, I must thank you, for art's sake. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. Oh. Why do they change... Why do they change the way it works? It's so stupid. Like, before, you had to formally accuse someone. If you just walk in here, he just goes down that path. Like, that is completely opposite of how the entire game has functioned. Oh, it's stupid. Alright, I'm leaving.
Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. All right, that was stupid. Why did they do it that way? How far back do I have to go? Ugh. I think our last save was in the camp. Oh no, it was before we punched the guy. Package from Vogel? Wait, what did it just load? Oh, I loaded an auto save, I think. Do, do, do. I don't want an auto save, I want a manual save. They wanted to switch things up? Well, they shouldn't, because that's stupid. <laughs> it just randomly decides, like, oh, you're making an accusation. Uh, no, no, I'm not, actually. Sorry. You don't just get to decide that because I came here, that now the case is over. All right, uh, where did it leave us off? We are, all right, so we already had the profile, so we're not that far back. That's good. If you're here on matters of signing up for Skip. military service, come back tomorrow. Observe. I am saving after this. It might just randomly end my case again before I'm ready. What was the last clue? Up here. Alright, he's a party goer. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Boom! You defiled a girl who was with child. Don't even pretend. Take Fine. it. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's... The painting that depicted... Oh, I had to connect all the, the mind palace stuff again. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard... Help the refugees. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees. I forgot that we got two trophies in that sequence. Nayla deserves the very utmost. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. All right, there we go. Do all that. Mind palace. These two are connected. Oh, hold on. Okay, and then I think that was it, actually, wasn't it? All right, now these are connected. I tried to connect these, right? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, and then that's yeah, that led to the to the accusation. Okay, cool. I believe Sorry, that's where we were. Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. All right, so may as well put a save in now, just in case. And we're back where we were. Not that bad. It's only a couple minutes. And we got to see the stupid accusation chain for the for the resolution I don't think I'm gonna go with. Because I think they're trying to blackmail that guy for money. Uh, but we'll see. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Let's go to the police station. Okay, and wait. Oh, I need to go back to the mine palace. I need to click this. And then that will give me a new casebook piece of evidence, the testimony. And then I want to ask about the tattoo. Why would it be in the archives? I still don't understand. Maybe I can just ask him. Would you like to report a crime? No. Okay. Because it doesn't have the archive icon. Maybe it's just bugged. All right, so what am I doing? Crimes, well, I'm interesting, interested about smuggling. Subjects would be a suspect. Evidence, no. And district, no. Criminal pattern, let's try this. Nope, that doesn't work. 
were you guys just guessing or do you actually know? Because I don't think it's this. I mean, that... That clue thing is for talking to people. District Scaladio? Is it necessarily, though? I mean, we don't know where he's from. We could try. Smuggling. Well, I guess he's not a smuggler. The smuggler's a completely separate thing. So that's... That's what uh, I'm potentially doing wrong. So I'm gonna try violent. Smuggling suspect. Okay. We don't necessarily know that he's a smuggler. The smuggling thing was... Oh no, he was. Yeah, he was one of the smugglers because he knew the cop. Yeah, never mind. What am I talking about? All right, suspects and Scaladio. Nope. Wrong again. Wrong again. Well, now I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so... This has always meant talk to somebody. So I'm almost wondering if we dress up as a criminal and we just ask. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we dress up as a criminal because they're going to know what these tattoos mean. So, let's try that. I don't think the sailors would know. How would a sailor know? We're going to try asking a criminal. Okay. So, we're going to wardrobe. We're going to my initial idea, which is really my only idea, so hopefully it works. We want the criminal chic. And that's probably good enough. Why are you guys on the sailor thing? Sailors aren't criminals, people. They're just sailors. You don't like automatically become a pirate just because you own a boat. Down there is probably not going to help me out in any. Let's see. These guys look a little rough. Yeah, this guy right here. What do you know about this? Do you know anything about this? Nah, fella. I got no idea about this. All right, he's got no idea. To be fair, he kind of looked like a seaman, but he looked more of the criminal variety. Tattoo. Wait, I, I don't understand. Like... At what point did it ever mention that that tattoo had anything to do with sailing? I'm so confused where you guys have drawn this corollary. Did it and I just missed it? Let's see, where's the tattoo thing? This thing's got a lot of evidence. All right, where is that tattoo? Oh, I think it's... It had its own entry, right? Uh, maybe it didn't? Dead Man Walking? No? All right, well, I don't remember what I said, but Camp Intruder's body. A distinctive tattoo on his neck, two horizontal lines, one over another with a point at the top. Oh, I'm, I'm so stupid. I have the thing selected. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, at no point did it ever mention sailing, so I don't get it. I don't know. I think you guys have a bias against sailors. I think you're a bunch of sailor haters. Oh, actually, you know who I could ask? I didn't even think about it. The freaking refugees would know something about the tattoo. I never even thought to ask them. That's stupid. I mean, these people kidnap them all the time. They should know something. That's probably what it is. Alright, they must know something. Can you satisfy my curiosity? 
Sorry, we don't see much here. Oh, yes, you do. Maybe this guy's willing to help. I helped him. Or maybe the, the dude that we healed. Alright, you, you must know something. At least some of your kind. No! Thank you again. Alright, I'm confused. And you guys seem confused as well. The inspector? I think we tried talking to the inspector about it, but we can try again. You still here? Aha! Aha! Here we go. Here we go. Where is the tattoo one? Tattoo. There it is. The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck. Two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? Mm-hmm. Inspector Tewksbury at the refugee camp says that men tied to a certain Niccolo Bernadotti possess tattoos such as this one. Bernadotti is a local businessman from Scaladio who is rumored to run a smuggling chain between colonies and the mainland. There we go. Now... We can go to the archive. Well, now we obviously go to the archive. Oh, and my casebook has a new thing I didn't look at. All right. Inspector Tewksbury at the refugee camp says that men tied to blah, blah, blah. That's all the same, I think. No, it's slightly different. Inspector Tewksbury at the refugee camp says that men tied to a certain Niccolo Bernadotti possess tattoos such as this one. Bernadotti is a businessman from Scaladio who is rumored to run a smuggling chain covered by importing goods and wines between colonies and the mainland. Actually, maybe that is exactly the same. Alright, so we came here for a completely different purpose we're looking for a specific person so smuggling he would be a suspect suspect is a little much based on that description but anyways uh and scaladio nicolo bernadotti questioning summary nicolo bernadotti born 1834 is a businessman and patron well known in cordona the founder and owner of the bernadotti company limited uh established 1873 Main office, Southeastern Scaladio, Bazaar Road, near the crossing with Roman Road. Mr. Bernadotti was brought in for questioning on February 13th, 1876, after a tip-off from one of our anonymous sources. The source provided information that points to Mr. Bernadotti's connection to the smuggling of liquors and items of antique art between British colonies, Cordona, and the rest of the United Kingdom. People allegedly working for Mr. Bernadotti's company were previously linked to a number of unlawful activities including robbery, violence, racketeering, and blackmailing. Blackmailing, huh? Mr. Bernadotti was called in for questioning as a witness. Since there is no tangible evidence available to serve any charges, during the questioning carried out by myself and Officer Booth, Mr. Bernadotti claimed to be unaware of any operations and facts provided by our source. No information could be obtained on his activities before he moved to Britain documented or otherwise as mr Bar or as mr bernadotti claims up until 1873 he lived in cecilia idiot italy uh where he had a vending business until he moved to london and began importing goods conclusion it is not possible to incriminate mr bernadotti with anything connected to the case inspector herbert Ryder. save there's some more uh what was that an impressive slice of life. The police had a lot on him, and uh, that was apparently John talking, but I heard none of it for some reason. All right. 
So there's that. Uh, we obviously want to go to his office. Oh, what's this one? Oh, that's the testimony. Uh, yeah, we obviously want to go to that office. And that was where again? Southeastern Scaladio Bazaar Road near the uh, intersection of Roman Road. So Bazaar and Roman. Okay. And uh, we will save because apparently upcoming trophies. Well, I'm in my uh, criminal chic, so I guess that's a good choice. Put on detective clothes, but I'm gonna blend right in. They'll never know. All right, so Bizarre Road in Roman, or at least close to there, that would be, wait, he said Southeast Scaladio, so down here? Where's Roman? Oh, Roman's there. Wait, what? Bazaar doesn't cross Roman. Oh, I guess it does down here. Wait, Roman? But Roman's up there. Uh, oh, and then Roman turns. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's around here somewhere. Oh, where detective clothes? It's a trophy. Okay. That's, uh, that's a strange one, but okay. I mean, I'm usually wearing the detective clothes. I don't know why specifically this one matters, but I guess we'll find out together. Okay, so it's supposed to be around here. Oh, and I need to mark it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so there's probably a sign I would imagine Should be a big old sign Maybe What's that say? That's Trattoria. That's not it Bizarre road goes this way Oh, uh, maybe it's this building. This looks official. Bernadotti Company? Seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. Alright, we found it. Um. Let me in. Okay. Can we find another way around? Or we could just ask? Hi. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. You've never heard of the building you're standing outside of? Alright, maybe we can go in this door. No. Oh, out back. <laughs> These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. Interesting. Front door to the Bernadotti Company LTD offices closed. We should find another way in. There is a warehouse adjacent to the office building. The backyard of the warehouse is busy with a lot of cargo and workers moving around. The workers in the backyard are the refugees from the camp. Wait. Mark that. An essential remedy against sea scourge on any ship. Well, I guess they're just gonna let me walk around. Seems kind of odd. This earthenware came a long way from the Staffordshire potteries. I guess if you act like you belong, or act like you belong, then uh, people will just let you walk around. Which is actually true in a lot of cases. There are sealed crates marked VH Grintley Flow Blue Tableware. Some crates are full of lemons. Porcelain friend for every child. Some crates are stuffed with toys.
shipped from Cape Town. The wine route from colony to colonies. Bernadotti doesn't miss an opportunity to occupy every niche in the market. The barrels are filled with wine. Markings suggest South African origins. That's you go oh. talk to that beef. I'll sneak up from behind and take him out. <laughs> is that so, John? I don't think that's gonna work. The only way in is guarded, so we either storm in or find a way for the guard to let us in. Alright, well I guess we're storming in. I assume that's part of that trophy. Probably not exactly the Sherlock style, but Hey yo, this is private property. You lost something. Here for city hall business? That's probably not a good idea. Want to see Mr. Bernadotti or I'm a private investigator? Uh, wow. Well, let's see. I didn't realize the outfit was important for short temper. I must have gotten lucky when I did that part. Oh, I see. You guys talking about that stuff. Private investigator? All right. I'm a private investigator, which means we're about to have a shootout. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm investigating a robbery, and Mr. Bernadotti may be just the man to help me with... You a copper? I have nothing to do with the police. I... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Do I have to hit him, or can I ask him a question? <laughs> All right, hit him. We're in a punching mood lately. I did try to resolve this peacefully. Short temper. Sherlock, you've changed. You used to be such a pacifist. Now you're just punching people. You're pistol whipping them. You've changed. I hardly recognize you. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Dodge again. There we go. Oh! Ow! Well, whatever. That'll just... Remind him who's boss. Too simple. The joke's on us. He doesn't know how to count to three. No more crime for you. The snuff's ready. Uh, the snuff's ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there they are. Hi. They throw way too much, dude. Seriously, like, try something else. Oh, I didn't reload. He don't want to do that. Time to knock this guy out. You know, I just realized the there's snuff. five bandit layers, but we've still only done two at this point. It's kind of crazy. Where is it? There you are. Just you die. Punk. Do some. The snuff's ready. Oh, I. I, I caught the chat, you guys talking about John. I didn't see him up there, that's hilarious. Wait, wait. oh, there he is. Just chilling. It's like, sure, like that? That looks uh, dangerous down there. I am invincible. Are you now? Uh, wait, what happened? Oh, I grabbed the wrong guy. I couldn't miss Grab the him. Party. Thank you. Take a rest, my friend. Oh, I couldn't quite get that. What is he doing? Did I break him? Just He's just die. like standing around. Oh, there he goes. Oh, crap. He's all yours now. Go for it. I don't have an angle. All right, I'm going to need just to use die. the environment. Hello 
don't cry, you'll live. Don't bother moving. Give him the pepper snuff. Alright, the front door to the Bernadotti Company LTD office is closed. We should find another way in. We already did that. Did you not see what we just did? Alright. Hi, John. You've disappointed me so much, Sherlock. <laughs> oh? What, just because I punched a criminal? What's wrong with you? I've apparently disappointed John, but he can shove it. Sherry, look. This seems familiar. I read about John in this game possibly being a figment of Sherlock's mind. Like, possibly he was his childhood imaginary friend. Do you think that's I mean, it's definitely true. <laughs> it's, uh... It's been spelled out. Alright, so we got this dude over here. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's alright. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here. Oh, John is really pissed off about that, ain't he? Get over it, John. I punched a criminal. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. Yep. Smuggled artifacts. Various objects of ancient art stored in the Bernadotti Company Limited warehouse. The artifacts are mostly of African origin. The sculpture of African Dogon sculpt or bleh. the sculpture of African Dogon culture depicts humans in simplified, almost geometrical forms. The prolonged oval mask of Chakwe culture might represent both feminine beauty and death. Is this? Let's see what's hidden there. I'm so confused. Didn't we get this in the apartment? Or am I going crazy? I thought we saw it. Maybe not this exact one, but like maybe a piece he was working on. And that's also not an African woman. All right, anyways. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? All right. Stolen painting from the gallery. A painting depicting a naked woman in the embrace of a devil, found in the Bernadotti Company Limited warehouse. This is the painting created by Boniface Mercurio and the one stolen from Werner Vogel's art gallery. However twisted the imagery is, Mercurio's mastery is undeniable. He might have become a renowned artist on par with the greatest, but now we will never know. Oh, we had a picture of the photo? Or we had a photo of the picture? Okay, that's that's the part that I missed apparently, that we had a photo of it. I thought it was the legit one. Hello. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch you to pieces. <laughs> no one will find your body. <laughs> wow, are we going like full Sherlock murderer? <laughs> Go ahead or I'll break you. Wow, this seems out of character. Right? Like honestly, all of these feel out of character. <laughs> What's the choice? Uh, 
I like this side of Sherry. Of course you do, Miss Chen. You love chaos. You're the arbiter of chaos. Go ahead. Enough character breaking. Well, he is younger here, so I'll take it. Alright, I'm going to go with go ahead. I do want to keep him <laughs> somewhat uh, consistent as a character. Go ahead. Make my day. <laughs> right, so. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. Wow. This is, um, an interesting development. I feel like this case has pushed him over the edge. It was too dark for him. Maybe, like, maybe that Vogel guy is like a Sith Lord and he's, like, trying to bring this out in Sherry. You acted so much like me. Alright, Cordona Chronicles, Zeppelin related front page. Uh, okay. I don't know why that popped up as a investigate thing. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. I'm pretty sure this is just the exit. <laughs> Got the scared lady over there. We'll ignore her for now. I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. Alright, Mind Palace. Nayla is the woman from the photograph. The stolen painting. Mercurio's painting, which was stolen from Vogel's gallery, is at Bernadotti Company LTD, I assume. Well, that's that. Uh, actually the same thing. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. I'm not gonna shoot you. Spare me. Wow. Okay. Spare me. Oh, maybe I can? Yeah, I gotta... No? Alright, never mind. I can't interact with that at all. Spare me. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Well, hold on. I'm going to go check out your sales department. Never mind. We'll talk after all. It's an intimidation tactic. But first, I'm looking around, and I'm talking to my imaginary friend. Sherry, don't you think this office suits me? Quite a collection. He seems very uninterested in investigating right now. I think he's, uh, he's going over the edge. Yeah, he's just, like, sort of looking, but doesn't want to investigate. Like, he just wants, like, he's super focused on, like, just killing this dude or whatever. I, I don't know. I'm, like, hardcore at the moment. Whenever you're ready, I'd hate to intrude. Gang tattoo, different from the others. That must make him the leader. Which it, I mean, he is. Hardened hands doesn't shun dirty work. He's got his gun, which he did not draw. Holstered pistol, cold-blooded. Wedding ring, married. Nothing with the shoes. Damaged skin. Had pellagra. I don't know what that is. Nicolo Bernadotti is a cruel gang leader who isn't afraid of getting his hands dirty to show off his position of power. 
A hard worker in his youth, Bernadotti grew, hate, grew hatred towards the world around him. He continually expects trouble and is always ready to make some. Raised in a poor family, he had to work in the fields from a young age. This led to his suffering from pellagra, the effects of which still show on his skin. He refuses to hide this under fancy clothes, that he might always remember where his motives and identity were born. Bernadotti and his men have different tattoos in the same style. The tattoos are most probably a code that represents different ranks within a tightly structured and secretive criminal organization. Or calculating mastermind. Nicolo Bernadotti is a harsh gang leader and calculating businessman. He beams confidence and menace. He anticipates danger by keeping his gun near him, but still holds it in the holds it in the holster. Bernadotti descends from the working class, being raised in a poor family. He had to work in the fields from a young age. Hard work under the sun and bad nutrition led to his suffering from pellagra. He became the or he overcame the disease, but its effects still show on his skin. Despite being financially comfortable now, he still distances himself from the high life, keeping his clothing and appearance quite conservative. Bernadotti and his men have different tattoos in the same style. The tattoos are most probably a code that represents different ranks within a tightly structured and secretive criminal organization. Pelagra comes from malnourishment. Uh, ruthless. I mean, he's not... I don't think a ruthless crime lord would just wait patiently for me. That speaks more to a mastermind to me. And he hasn't... Well... He hasn't shown himself to be overly cruel. In fact... In fact, his... His henchman, presumably, because he works for him, tried not to kill anybody. But... Accidentally killed somebody. And then accidentally killed himself so i'm thinking mastermind like that that's not particularly ruthless i mean he's ruthless in other ways i guess it really depends on the definition of ruthless he hasn't sent a goon after us to be fair yeah i'm with you guys i think mastermind let's go with calculating mastermind Well, I mean, he is ruthless to the, um, to the refugees, obviously. But he's not ruthless in terms of, like, murdering and violence. He's ruthless in other ways. Uh, but we'll go with, uh, Mastermind. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume? The name is Sherlock Holmes, and I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic end. For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. Do you know Boniface Mercurio? Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. I'm investigating a robbery. Sure. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. Your man died at the camp. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. 
He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? Uh, do, 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 do. Smuggled artifacts. Well, I don't care about that. Not yet, at least. Why do you need the girl? Or why did you need the girl? Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. Refugees at your warehouse. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me, refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Smuggled artifacts. I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh, high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Say I give you the photo. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. 
Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home, outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. Interesting. All right. So, there's the character portrait for Niccolo Bernadotti and Bernadotti's offer. Mr. Bernadotti claims that the British envoy had sent his man to obtain both the painting and the photograph from Mercurio, but when things at the flat got out of control, he came to Mr. Bernadotti for help. Furthermore, Bernadotti claims he never ordered anyone to be harmed, which seems to be true. Bernadotti's man was originally hired by a British envoy. The defiler captured on the photograph. Uh, being blackmailed by Mercurio, the envoy wanted to obtain the evidence used against him. Now, Bernadotti wants to use the photograph to blackmail the envoy. Bernadotti offers me a deal. I give him the photograph so he can blackmail the British envoy, and in return, Bernadotti will obtain a home and a legal citizenship for the abused refugee woman and her child. Okay. This case did not turn out the way I expected. Uh, so we have the stolen painting and Bernadotti's offer. Uh, well, we need to connect these things. Uh, so the stolen painting... And Bernadotti's offer. We can flip this one now. So victim of violation, Nayla was violated and very nearly kidnapped. First of all, I must make sure that she and her baby are secured or system sufferers. All refugees are victims of the system. The situation they are in must and can be mended. What happens if I go this route? All right, well that doesn't lead me to anything. So Bernadotti's offer in the stolen painting. Blackmail material. Bernadotti wants to gather proof of the envoy's crimes in order to blackmail him. All right, so that leads us to this one. Bernadotti wants to blackmail the envoy. Mr. Bernadotti knows how to turn a situation to his advantage. When he learned of the envoy's forcible violation, he saw an opportunity to gain greater power. He has offered me a deal, the photograph in exchange for a happy life for Nela. Merciless justice. The envoy is despicable, and Bernadotti is trying to take advantage of the situation. I cannot trust either of them. Only the truth will resolve matters. I must give the photograph to Vogel so he can make everything public. Or unexpected collaboration. Bernadotti is a shady businessman, but his promise to arrange a happy life for Nela and her child was convincing. This is what truly matters now. Give Bernadotti the evidence to blackmail the envoy. And then you can simply swap that around. And there's the envoy options. <laughs> oh crap, I forgot this all began as an investigation as a painting theft. Yep. Alright. Uh, let's see. Whatever you're talking about, Miss Chen, I did not see it. Why is the casebook showing something new? I don't know. What is apparently new? Oh, down here. Wait, why is that showing as new? And why is that showing as dialogue? What? I think that broke. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Alright, let me save. And let me think through this. Because I think I'm missing some connections here. Alright, so... I think the part that I'm missing... Is how Nayla got to this party in the first place because wouldn't that have been Bernadotti's men or isn't that something or is that something completely different? 
Because that's, that's the part I haven't connected yet. So everything else after that makes sense. But who got her to that party is the part that I don't understand. I don't understand that part at all. But then after that, it makes sense. He, you know, does the thing. There's a photograph of it. Mercurio makes a painting. The envoy black or the um, Mercurio blackmails the envoy with the painting and the photograph. The uh, envoy hires Bernadotti's man to go take it back. Bernadotti apparently tells him not to harm anyone, which that seems to be the case, but. He accidentally kills Mercurio. He didn't, um, or no, he did take the painting, but he didn't get the photograph, which is what we found. It was hidden in that um, that uh, antler head thing. And then uh, Bernadotti sends his man to the refugee camp to get the lady, but then he got killed in the process because the refugees... We're trying to help. So yeah, I'm still confused on how she got to that party. It must have been Bernadotti, right? Like, who else would have gotten her out of that camp to that party? Like, maybe they didn't know what would happen at the party? But that's the part. Like, it seems like... It seems like he's been setting him up from the very beginning. The red icons are giving you... Oh, the three choices for how to resolve the situation. Okay, that makes more sense. So our options... Our options are to work with Bernadotti. He helps out Nela, Gives her a house and everything. Which... It seems like he would... Like, he would definitely do it. Like, I don't think he would go back on it because he's going to make out like a bandit from it and get whatever he wants from City Hall. And he's also probably going to keep extorting the refugees. Alternatively, we can uh, go with the envoy who would help all of the refugees. Or we can expose him which gets him out of the way for Bernadotti. And Bernadotti's gonna keep exploiting those people. So I guess I would say this, I don't know, I don't know who is in the right or the wrong in the whole party situation, but I am more, I. I think Bernadotti actually is a mastermind, and he set this whole thing into motion, and it just didn't quite work out exactly the way that he wanted. And that the Thomas guy might actually truly just be a party goer and uh, have gotten drugged and, you know, some crazy stuff happened. That's my best guess. I do think in terms of helping people that helping the envoy is probably the best move <laughs> we should probably tell Vogel the entire story so far this is wild <laughs> so I guess I guess morally morally it well I don't know it's all morally gray <laughs> both Bernadotti and the envoy are in the wrong the question is whether we want to let one of them off for the greater good well that's the thing though like yeah yeah because if we if we expose them that doesn't help the refugees that doesn't help the refugees at all Because if we expose them, that actually probably makes the situation worse for the refugees because now... Well, I guess it doesn't make it worse. It makes it the same. So it doesn't get worse for them. It just is the same. Oh no, actually it is worse because now any chance that they had of getting 
citizenship or whatever it is to get them out of that slum is pretty much gone. So, well, man, this is a tough one. See, I like these kinds of things. Like, there's no clear best decision. Like, they all are like, you know, well, this good thing happens, but this also happens, which is not so great. Another one will just show up to worsen the refugee situation. It's probably a good point. I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of leaning... I'm kind of leaning more towards the envoy and having him help all the refugees. Yeah. Like, I think it's the uh, the lesser evil. Because exposing them, I think, accomplishes nothing. And I think... I think uh, helping Bernadotti is just going to keep them exploited forever because he's going to continue to exploit them and now completely unchecked. Might be linked to why she was at the party. Yeah, I mean, unless there's some thread that I'm missing, the only way she got to that party is because of Bernadotti. So he's like... He's not only using them for labor, but he's also, like, just whenever somebody wants a refugee for any purpose, he's just going to send them. Let me, as one last thing, let me um, re-go through their testimony just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So, the envoy said he was at the party, but was drugged, so he barely remembers the event. He received a letter from an anonymous person who blackmailed the envoy, extorting money in exchange for the photograph. The envoy also claims that he did not hire the thief, nor is he responsible for Mercurio's death. But he tried to buy the painting because he was afraid of losing his social position. He claims himself guilty but proposes a deal. If I bring him the photograph, he will help the refugees. So he did lie about not hiring the guy. So there is that. Then Bernadotti's offer. Mr. Bernadotti claims that the British envoy had sent his man to obtain both the painting and the photograph from Mercurio. But when things at the flat got out of control, he came to Mr. Bernadotti for help. Furthermore, Bernadotti claims he never ordered anyone to be harmed. Bernadotti's man was originally hired by a British envoy, the defiler captured on the photograph. Being blackmailed by Mercurio, the envoy wanted to obtain the evidence used against him. Now Bernadotti wants to use the photograph to blackmail the envoy. Bernadotti offers me a deal. I give him the photograph so he can blackmail the British envoy and in return, Bernadotti will obtain a home and a legal citizenship for the abused refugee woman and her child. So there's also this. He already had a deal that he backed out of. So, actually that is interesting like he's telling me he's gonna do this thing but in the past he also said he was gonna do a thing and then he backed out of it so this dude just cannot be trusted so I, I think regardless we do not go with Bernadotti because he will just say whatever is in his best interest and he may not go through with it oh wait isn't Mercurio Vogel's friend I was just looking back uh friend might not be the right word but he's uses his um gallery I don't know, like, honestly, this whole thing might have been set in motion by this guy. Like, it might have truly been a setup. The guy is a party goer. That doesn't necessarily mean he does, you know, anything beyond that. Anything, uh, well, rape in this case. Just means he showed up for a party and potentially got drugged or too drunk or something. I don't know. All right, I'm going with the envoy. So the front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it if you want, of course. I'm going with the envoy. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I get the trophy. If I don't, we'll reload the save, and we will um, do quote unquote the correct option. Because that's the thing. Like this whole case, you aren't actually necessarily saying like who's right or who's wrong. Like you're really just trying to decide. 
what is the best course of action to help the most people if that's what you so choose so yeah let's um let's go with this option and uh see what happens Have you thought it all through? I will give you the photograph. Almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the Crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician how he performs his tricks. But how can I believe you? Ugh. I presume you do believe in my selfishness. The initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other than the British envoy. Savior and protector of those in need. It's a win situation for me too. Now, what about the photograph? You deserve to be punished, but the greater good is what matters here. I won't bargain it for justice for Nathan. I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes. Well, there you go. I got the trophy. Voice of the people. And Miss Chen is disgusted. Alright, so we're well past uh, how long I intended to go tonight. Can I save it right here? I guess I didn't technically finish the case, so let's finish the case and then we'll save. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. Uh, all right. Mercurio is dead. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day. On account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. The thief is dead. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. For I'm presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more then. What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. What is it? And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. About my mother. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I'd hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. He's fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. All right. Our case is finally done. I was not expecting that to go in the directions it went or be nearly as long as it was, but it was interesting. It was very interesting. I think, uh, at least for me, that one was uh, as good 
as the first one. I feel like I feel like the first main mission and the third one they nailed it, and the second one was terrible. <laughs> Terrible's a, a bit strong, but the second one doesn't even remotely compare. Like, the second one just felt inconclusive and not particularly interesting. So, I like that one a lot better. Alright, so a package from Vogel. Werner Vogel mentioned that he has a gift for me, something that once belonged to my family. It was delivered to the front door of my manor. Cool. So, we will mark that. I will save the game. <laughs> wow, a great case in a marathon evening. And that wasn't even the... We didn't even do the whole case tonight because we had already made some progress on it. And we're three and a half hours in. So, wow, that took forever. Uh, but anyways, that's it for tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be on uh, Far Cry. And uh, let's see, I'm mixing my days up now. Thursday will be Chorus. Friday, if she is up for it because uh, she's been sick. We'll be Death Stranding with Blueberry. Saturday's Chorus again, and Sunday will be GTA Online. Hopefully, I'll see you guys at those streams. Hope you had fun tonight, and I will see you.